Someone's upset by it and I'm hurt by it and I feel betrayed by it. Are you still paying me? Yeah, I'm still paying me.
sad by the sand tiger. I want you to redistribute the wealth to all brawl by order of communist Turkey. Follow his Twitch streams at more brawl. It's cool, there's like eight things, so. Wait, what the heck? Bro, what this? What that? What is this? I'm really sorry I have to start stream like this. Today. <laughs> sorry, this is serious. I shouldn't laugh. I was outed as homophobic, which came as a huge surprise to me, being gay and all. But I was told by someone online who doesn't know me that I've been engaging an internalized homophobia when this whole time I thought I was engaging in externalized homophobia. So from now on, I'm going to be a lot more forward <laughs> with things. <laughs> I love that, though. I love when someone is like, first of all, no one is more homophobic than gay people. <laughs> my gay friends are some of the most homophobic people I've ever met in my life, okay? You've been engaging in homophobia. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Hi, baby cat. You want to be in the action? Please don't bite me. Please don't bite me. I know she's going to bite me. I can feel it coming. Don't really like the way she's looking at me right now. I don't like the way her tail is moving. She's going to bite me. <laughs> Please don't bite me. Okay. Please don't stand on my keyboard. I can't see when you stand there. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. I touch her belly when she gets too 
sprawled out. She does not like it, but I do it anyway. Go up there if you're going to go up there. What is this? Half th there you go. You can't sit there, though, because you're just going to... No. <laughs> okay. Big fat girl. Big fat cat. That's what you are. Big belly girl. Don't play with my headphones. Please. I know what you are. Peace. <laughs> She's humongous. Tell her all the time. Okay, anyway. Um, wow, there's not that many people here. Honestly, all the guys who've been supporting the non-consensual AI porn deserve their... <laughs> I may be a guy, but this shit absolutely sucks. It's depressing stuff. I can't read that, <laughs> but... Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's really disgusting. The, the downplaying of it has been atrocious. The people pretending that it doesn't actually cause harm is really nasty. The people who are like, oh, well, it's fine just to watch it. Why are you kink shaming? Listen, okay? I think it's fine to shame some kinks. They're not all good. We don't have to pretend that they're all good. If your kink is con consuming unconsensually made porn, we should shame that. You're a bad person. <laughs> You're nasty. And you should be in hell. Hi, Re. No more reality TV today. Like, that's just how I feel about it. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you are wrong. You're a bad person. And it's fine to shame you. <laughs> But I have had some people say like, oh, you're being sex negative. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> we know way too much about one another. Some of you need to reel that shit in. People are describing in detail what kind of porn they like to watch. I never asked, nor did I ever need to know that. Nobody needed to know that. Just keep that to yourself, please. We've gone too far with acceptance. We need to bring back stigmatizing. Some things should be stigmatized. You shouldn't feel comfortable saying the things that you fucking say. <laughs> Whatever happened to shame? If you jerk off, you should feel deep dread afterwards and a sense of impending doom. <laughs> I'm all for bringing back public shamings. I watch GILF on GILF softcore. <laughs> TMI was the first commonly said acronym I learned back in junior high. Yeah, no problem with people watching porn, but non-consensual porn is fucked up and should be illegal. It should be illegal. I have no problem with people doing whatever they want to do. You know, watch porn, don't watch porn. Just don't tell me about it. <laughs> like, I never asked. I don't want to know what you watch. I had someone message me and tell me that they thought about me while they jerked off. And I was like. <sighs> Lord, forgive me. I'm about to go to jail. Why would you ever? First fat shaming the cat, now kink shaming. It's only a compliment to call a cat fat. She is. She's got she's got a pouch on her. Hi, Sev. Happy Wednesday. Oh, I didn't turn my music on. I was just dancey at the beginning of the song. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of being a woman. <laughs> I was going to say I'm tired of being a woman online and then I just stop my sentence. I'm not tired of being a woman. This isn't me coming out as trans. I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with being a woman. I'm tired of misogyny. Fun fact, asking someone for consent to jerk off whilst thinking about them is actually way weirder than just doing it. Oh, 100%. Because, I mean, that, there's that's what people were trying... This is too loud in my ears now. People were trying to say, oh, how is watching deep fake porn different than just thinking about someone when you jerk off? I don't even know how you could think those things are similar. I don't even understand the leaps and bounds of of brain sickness you have to go through to come to the conclusion that they're even comparable. 
there is no harm in one if nobody is told about it they are on the other hand people are creating porn using the likeness of individuals who did not consent to be made into porn or to be sexualized for a profit how could you think that's the same the deep fakes are exclusively for personal use then maybe but if they're online there's obviously a fucking world of difference yeah that too i mean i think it's weird and gross to do it for personal use but there is a massive distinction there fellows of the world could you please not i have i didn't get to watch it yesterday because i was streaming but i i said i wanted to watch it so i i, I do want to watch it together um the video from that Havana covering it um on tyt yesterday and then i want to I'll talk about it. Obviously, I've given my opinion multiple times now, but I care a lot about this. I think it's really disgusting. <sighs> and honestly, I just want to have a conversation about how ho how hard it is to be a woman in a male-dominated space. Like, I, everyone likes to frame it like, oh, women streamers have it on easy mode without, like, realizing how much unique i mean and it's not even just not realizing some of them are fully aware and they just hate women but like the unique harassment that women suffer in streaming or even just like me as a female political commentator we are also a minority in political commentary most political commentators are men like think about most of the big streamers who do political commentary think about most of the big youtube channels that do political commentary even the fucking hosts of this the you know mainstream media uh you know political networks are men <laughs> that being said i low-key have love for chris hayes in my heart i think people are weird about him i think he's got pretty good uh pretty pretty good takes you can literally get sued just for some using someone's likeness in a standard media like video games without consent yeah that's called publicity right so you have the you have the ability to profit off of your own likeness it survives you past death um it's exclusive to you no one can profit off of your likeness without your express written consent otherwise they open themselves up to being sued for violating your publicity rights which is a form of um intellectual property rights so when you know intellectual property rights people usually think copyright trademark publicity rights is an interesting one that usually doesn't get brought up a lot i taught property law so i'm not i'm not an expert in property law or intellectual property in any way but like um yeah i, I taught this to, to some students so but yeah so like there's a famous case where people were selling t-shirts with martin luther king jr's face on it without he had already passed away but the right survives you after death so the the people who you know had his estate after he died sued the people making the t-shirts with his face on it and won because you have that exclusive right and especially when it comes to deep fake porn they're not like there was a famous case where lindsay lohan was used as uh you know those like loading screen stills in gta there was one that was obviously lindsay lohan but they didn't use her name. I mean, it looked a lot like her. I actually don't think she won that case for a different reason. But what, there's a distinction between that and these instances where they're using actual celebrities, streamers, people, what have you, for these deepfake porns because they're advertising them with that person's name. So they can't even just say, oh, it's not their likeness. They just kind of look like them when you are selling it with that person's name so you could never raise that defense in court i literally gagged spam tiana you know i heard the reason samuel l jackson got involved in marvel is because his likeness was used in a comic involving nick fury and instead of suing he used his position to get a role in mcu <laughs> hi jess Oh, Spud Monkey, thank you so much for resubbing for third 
13 months. Best streamer ever. Oh. God, he's so awesome. <laughs> Hi, Allie. Everyone go follow Allie's crying. Would publicity law apply if no one was making money? Of course, that's not the case here. Um, it, it, you, it has to be them profiting off of your likeness. <clears throat> when it comes to publicity rights, if I'm not mistaken, if no money is involved, I don't think you could still sue. You know, if, if it's like a defamatory, you could sue for defamation. I miss Anita Bump. There's like other avenues, but like, because it's, these things are being produced for money. They're making money. They're making ad revenue, even if they post them on sites that you know, you don't have to subscribe to to watch it. So they are making money. The issue is finding out the who is making it. Because you can say, hi, Tina. Everyone say happy birthday to Tina. It's her birthday today. Jayhawker, thank you for gifting a sub to Allie. And everyone go follow Tina, of course. Happy birthday. You know what's an interesting case? I heard churches were mad at the... F Whoa. I heard churches were mad at that G happy Jesus statue in front of that Kevin Smith movie, but not long after I've seen it on flyers for church events or masses. Oh, I know what you're talking about. But yeah, so let's... uh. There's some noise going on. Anyway, um, I want to watch the coverage they did on TYT about the story and we'll talk about it some more because I'm just so angry that there's just like this intense desire to, uh, emit, uh, you know, minimize the horrific experiences that women have online that actually drives a lot of people away from even trying to be a public figure as a woman in the first place and that unique harassment that women get chat is so sweet a twitch streamer named atrioc was recently exposed for watching deep fake pornography of two female streamers that he actually knew personally I love this. I'm so sorry. The B roll right here. <laughs> because what is this? Just they typed in esports to Getty images. Yeah, people can be attracted to what they want in a free society. Get over it, Snowflake. Happens to men all the time. I'm just going to assume that that means that you support pedophilia. No, hold on. I was going to play with that person for a second. <laughs> Come on. Give me a minute. So people can be attracted to what they want in a free society. So it's fine to be a pedophile is what you're saying, right? Because it's a free society. So you can be attracted to what you want. I don't support pedophilia. Oh, it's because that's sex with a non-consenting child. So then you can understand why non-consenting matters. So you understand the concept of consent, but you think it's okay to be attracted to porn that was created without the users, without the person depicted in its consent. Why why draw the line there? Why make why make that distinction? Because you're a disgusting, disgusting, depraved, horny loser who wants to justify his nasty actions? Is that why? Would it be okay to watch porn of someone getting raped, in your opinion? Clearly, it's a free society, right? Oh, 
only if it harms you. You don't think that there's harm in having your face on porn so that when people Google your name, porn of you comes up. You don't think that that causes real world harm? Because the women in these deep fakes say that it makes them feel like they're getting raped. And a lot of them are rape survivors. So they know what that feels like. But that's not harm in your opinion, right? That's not harm. Just trying to get your, just trying to get a handle on your, uh, your thoughts on this. If a woman takes a picture of a male model's ass without his consent, is that wrong? Yes. Are you, what kind of a fucking argument is that? Obviously, yes. The answer to that is yes. Are you joking? This doesn't even happen. Yeah, but we're also talking about something that is, it hasn't just happened. It is massive. The market for this is massive because of turds like you. <laughs> if someone does something without someone's consent, is that wrong? Yes, it's wrong. <laughs> it's happened to my friends. It's happened to people. I'm 15. I don't even... Go do your fucking Algebra 1 homework, bitch. Why are you in my stream ranting about sexual attraction? You're not even old enough to experience that. Also, it means you lied. It means you lied to get into my stream. So please go do your homework. Please go do your homework. Sorry. Now, for those who might be unfamiliar with deep fake porn, it's when uh, a woman having the I'm sorry, having the name Epic Gains at 15 years old is so funny. <laughs> sorry, like, did you run a lot today in gym class, <laughs> or what are you talking about, Epic Gains? <laughs> Stop, don't come in my stream if you're a child, okay? I literally have, you have to select that you are over 18 to watch my stream. Oh. <laughs> Not gonna allow that chat. <laughs> Did you see the written apology he put out today? I'll talk about that. I won't allow testicles. Is child, 40 year old child. To be fair, the only time in my life I'd name myself something like that was when I was eight, 15. Will you show Chad the deep fake I made of you? Did you send it again? Censored? I'll, I have to open up my Discord right now. They're getting those epic gains in their collection. <laughs> Is that Nick Adams Jr.? I don't even know if I can show this. I don't. Wait, Cave Dwelling made a deep fake of me. And yes, the first one she sent me was uncensored. <laughs> you see, this is art. Uncensored and uncut. <laughs> okay, sorry. Memes aside woman, a public figure uh, who has not consented and who has never appeared in porn is used, her image is used through the technology, deep fake technology. Did you see to Nick Adams posting about having a foursome with the boys? Good for him. <laughs> it appear as though she is in a real porn video. Um, and it's incredibly dehumanizing, it's awful, uh, almost 100% of the time. Uh, actually, if you recall, I drew you topless within a few months of the first showing up in chat. That's true. I do recall, and it's still an emo in my chat, I think. Yes, it is. 100% <laughs> of the time, the women- Although that's the censored one. Did not consent to it. It's just awful. And in California, by the way, it is illegal because it's considered revenge porn. Now, yesterday, he accidentally showed uh, one of his browser windows, which showed deepfake porn of the streamers Pokimane and Maya. 
The site featured deep fake porn content of several other female streamers, by the way, all of which were uh, locked behind a paywall. So in order for him to watch them, he has to pay for those videos. Oops. Yeah. Ray, you only want to watch this because Anna mentions you. I actually didn't know that they were going to talk about me, but I had talked to Anna about this story and she mentioned to me that they were going to cover it. But I opened the document yesterday and saw my tweet in there. But yeah, no, I want to watch it because of our conversation. So, uh, by the way, since the story broke, I should note for all the weirdos who might come across this video that the person who had uploaded those videos has now taken the videos down. Okay, so don't be a creep and go looking for them. But nonetheless. Yeah, when I was talking about this yesterday when I was on Binder's show, I was actually really grossed out because his chat was like, oh, that's terrible. Where's the link? Like, what's funny about this? They also got mad at me because I said something objectively true about Andrew Tate. <laughs> which I thought was funny. I was just saying that I don't think the solution to, like, if we look at what's happening with Andrew Tate, people are always like, oh, we need to address men's issues. But it's like, if you look at the problem, right? Like, he was sex trafficking women who are the victims of his fans' violent misogyny. Women who are the victims of their harassment. Women who will be the victims of the policies they advocate for. Women. What the core of the issue is Tina, undo that. <laughs> what the core of the issue is, is misogyny. And we don't address misogyny by centering men. <laughs> like, I just think it's so silly to, like, say that that is the solution. And then the people in the chat were like, why are you speaking over men? Hi. How was work? Hi. You had nothing but love and support in the Twitch chat last night. Nice. Did you see this? Andrew Tate will remain in custody for at least another month after an appeal against his detention was rejected by Romanian judges. That's awesome. Here's a clip of Atrioc apologizing uh, for his creepy behavior during an apology stream where his wife is used as a prop in the same clip. Let's watch. I really want, especially women on Twitch, to feel safer. Like, I, uh, we call booba spam cringe. We don't do that there. I'm never Bro, saying booba spam in your apology video is insane. Not as insane as having your wife sit seated like slightly behind you sobbing. Like, you have to have known how weird this was. Made like a weird, I don't know, seat sniffing show. I've never done anything like that. I've never done anything like that on this stream. Good for you for not sniffing women's seats after they get up. You are a true god amongst men. I, you know... All is forgiven, Atrioc. You don't let people say booba in chat. You're a great guy. We don't you don't you don't sniff women's chairs once they stand up. What a freaky thing to say. And we don't tolerate any sex behavior in the chat. Oh, we, we ban it on site. And uh and like I've done this consistently over and over and over. And then 2 a.m. You know, I've been, I've been watching so much. I've been reading so much AI stuff. It really sounded like he was about to say, I've been watching so much fucking porn. <laughs> I was so sure that's what he was going to say. I'm reading all this stuff about AI and, and, uh, and deep fake music, deep fake art and everything. And I'm in these discords and I was, <sighs> it's still so embarrassing. To me. But I was on Pornhub, dude. I was on regular as normal. Website, and there was an ad. There's an ad on every video for this. So I know other people must be clicking it because it's on every video. It's not so bad that you did it because everyone else must have been doing it too. That's kind of the problem. And the fact that Pornhub allows those advertisements is sick. Fake thing. Okay. Um, just a few things I want to emphasize. Uh, he is referring to targeted ads which tend to exist because you're searching for certain things <laughs> so the targeted ads serve you up things that 
you know, know the, the algorithm, algorithm thinks you're interested in because you've been searching. For... Anyone notice lately on TYT someone misses one fuck on some videos? Did that happen? Or so they don't anymore? Well, that's good. Things. So you kind of added yourself with that one. Um, also, he kind of slipped up when he was like, oh, I, I've been watching all this stuff. I'm reading all this stuff about AI. And you just happened to come across deep fake porn videos that are behind a paywall of female streamers that he, by the way, knows. Oh, this was in the bonus episode? Personally. He, apparently one of them even baked a cake for his wedding. Uh, I, uh, I just... Yeah, her and I talked about that. <laughs> I And I'm going to do my best not to mention the names of the streamers involved. I'll look at the written apology. I'm not, I'll be honest though. I'm going to be exceptionally hostile towards it because I just really don't what he did, not just, not just what he did initially, but what he did when he apologized at some point, he was talking about how he was going to show people the receipt, which would show the website's name in it. Like without, Ignore. I think he just fails to understand, at least fail to understand the severity of what this is. And, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, what is he trying to do, right? He's trying to cover his own ass. Did he reach out to the streamers individually before this? No. Which just makes me feel like now he's seen the blowback he's getting. And now he feels like he has to do all this work to rehabilitate his image. And not that, you know, the initial reaction, the first response should have been apologizing to those women. The website owner took it down. That's true. But they hadn't yet when he did this. Terrible. Yeah, this is this is a really sad story. Um, so there's a couple of different. Hi, Chris Huggy. You guys talking about Andrew Tate? We're not, but we could be. It's your girl. Please, someone. I need to make that into a sound bite. I need to make that into one of the, the bit sound bites that you can play. But <laughs> here. First, look, man, this this does not fall into the cat. This story does not fall into the category I'm about to tell you, okay? Uh, which is I hate any story where we're talking about people's private sex lives, private porn watching, etc. It's a super easy way to target uh, people, political opponents. That is not this story, okay? But it makes me uncomfortable every time, and it is uh, sometimes what establishment figures do. If they've got someone they don't like, they try to find something that they did wrong. In fact, it reminds me of. So I don't want to get too deep into it because again, I, I like, I like Jenks turning this into a conversation about politics. I mean, you can make it about politics, but like. <laughs> about like how political figures attack one another. Just went on Hub and all ads are about hentai games or hot milfs in area, no AI ads, despite my search history being like 70% machine learning and how to make AI pictures. Him paying for it is the gross thing, in my opinion. Like it's not just something he came across and randomly clicked. Yeah. Oh yeah, the video apology was absolutely terrible. The twit longer was better. Not defending him at all, but it was better. He should have used the twit longer in his apo video apology. He shouldn't have made a video apology. Especially because he was going to cry in it. Like, suck it up, bitch. You are not the victim here. <laughs> like, you're just trying to gain sympathy points. I don't think he should have even made that video. That's not this story. Uh, but there was a, a University of Michigan professor and a uh, Dick Cheney, all the way back in the Bush administration, all ordered a research into his sex life and try to catch him on anything at all. And I remember his quote. It's like, thank God I'm- Oh, sorry. A streamer was caught watching deepfake AI porn of other streamers, and his response was really bad. So boring. Okay. And I didn't do anything wrong. So I don't want to live in that world. So those stories, any story in that category makes me uncomfortable, okay? Now, in this case, though, it's this is like more there like that. There will be AI porn release of some crazy politician the day before an election or something ridiculous. I'm sure it already exists if, if AOC. I am a hundred percent sure it already exists of AOC. I don't have to look look to know the types of nasty sexualizing attacks she gets. I am certain it exists. Originally, I just thought of it as a horny man moment where he just wanted to get off in the moment. But after watching QD stream, I changed my opinion on it. Yeah, I think she made really like a really good point. And she said she's going to sue the people who made it. And God bless her. I hope she does. And I hope that she takes him for everything that he owns. And I don't know that the person who made it is a man. But I know that the person who made it is a man.
Alex Jones showing his phone and you see trans porn on it. And he's, he's like, like, no, 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 that's not everybody's phone. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> And, and by the way, like, there's nothing wrong. If you're into trans porn, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't care, right? If no there is here. something wrong with it when you have built a brand being vicious to the, tra like, marginalized groups, including the trans community, a uh, transgender community, and then you're getting your rocks off with, ro with transgender porn. Like, yeah, then why do you stop spreading hatred towards them just because you hate yourself? Drives me crazy. Ted Cruz did that tweet where he accidentally tweeted out incest porn. Right? Oh, God. Yeah. So, Ted Cruz liked an incest porn tweet on 9-11. You gotta, you gotta insert that it was 9-11 because that makes it so much crazier. Anyways, but, but like even that still makes me uncomfortable. But in this case, <laughs> you Never paid a site <laughs> to access that porn about your friends. That they did not consent to. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's a huge violation. That, that's not, that's not, I was in a, I was reading up on AI and I got good in a rabbit hole. Dude, dude, just don't make those, I know it's a horrible situation, but don't make those excuses. Jesse Lee Peterson got caught like in gay porn, like gay bear on bear porn. Very unsurprising. Okay, just own up to it and say you did it and you feel terrible and it was a moment of weakness or whatever it was, okay? But trying to like finesse this and you're not going to be able to finesse it and it makes you look way worse. I really liked Ravana's commentary on this. Uh, she tweeted about it and she said this, having perverts make deep porn or deep fake porn with your face on it is so disgusting. I so fucking disgusting is what I said. <laughs> even have words. And then to have one of your peers pay to watch it, despicable. It's also a crime in California, so I hope these women can get some type of justice. The problem with, um, yeah, I didn't know she was going to show my tweet. I mean, I knew now because I had, uh, gee, who? <laughs> Your favorite streamer, me. <laughs> now, we, we talked about it in the DMs for a bit, right? In studio when? I haven't been to California in two years. Also, I don't know how well I would do in studio because I have a good setup. I'm hosting Friday, I should say. So make sure to, I'm going to be on watch list in the morning, the last morning episode of the watch list. And then I'm going to be uh, hosting the main show, the power panel, the second hour of the power panel on Friday. Um, but what was I going to say? But, oh yeah, it's, it's a lot easier for me to present the stories home. Would you ever share a BTS pic of where you work? Oh, 100% I could do that. Yeah. If, after I take my trash out. <laughs> East Coast time zone. Yeah, but um, because I have my notes right underneath where my camera is. So like, sometimes you can tell that I'm reading a little bit when I'm presenting. But like I have it right below my camera. Um, so it's really easy for me to like rem remember where I am, put notes for generally what I want to say there in studio, you have to print it out and have it in front of you. And I don't want to just be like reading off of a piece of paper. I mean, that's not what it would be, but I think I would get nervous and it would all end up being like, that. <laughs> so I'm not like most of the time when I'm presenting, I'm, if I'm reading a quote, I'm reading directly off my screen, but most of the time I just put a general note as to what I want to say or how I want to segue from one thing to the next. Um, Sometimes when I'm, you know, sometimes I write a lot of notes. There's an app for that. Mulberries, thank you so much for gifting to Yahweh. <laughs> Passing. I said that like it was a, like a coupon company, not Yahweh. I said, Yahweh. <laughs> Yahweh. Featuring not Sam Cedar. Oh, the, oh, those things are weird. The I, AII, what is it? contact eye contact things state laws is you only have control in yeah, your jurisdiction right. right so the violator would have to be living in california or would have to visit california for any potential prosecution to happen i would like to see federal law on this matter um unlikely uh, well you don't have to live in california to have prosecution brought against you in california they can use the long arm statute to, to have jurisdiction because they're selling this in California, which I think was the point I was making because we know that those, um, 
Well, I, I guess you have the issue of not having diversity of jurisdiction. But no, you don't need diversity of jurisdiction because if you're doing business in California and if you're the victim in California, you can sue in California. The company's doing business in California and you live there. So you don't have to worry about, you know, a jurisdictional issue because you can you can bring them in under the long arm statute. Or long arm theory, not statute, some statute. Ray, Sam Cedar definitely knows who I am. Hey. Everyone go follow Christina, by the way. Ray on Newsmax, when? The video we did, the story I covered about Newsmax has like 400,000 views now. <laughs> it was the last time I was on the main show. We had so much fun with that story. Uh, because, because of how useless Congress is, to be quite honest with you guys. Um, but Ray is correct. Uh, under state law, California residents can, in fact, sue anyone uh, who... Uh, Produces deep fakes of sexual. Yeah, thank you so much for subbing. Truly explicit content without the individual's consent. Um, there are similar laws in other states like Virginia and Texas, so that's good. I was right. Again, it is Virginia. I was right. It is Virginia. Homeboy's deaf deleted his archives for the purpose of legal ass covering and not because he actually thought it was a piece of shit for making the videos. Here's the thing you can delete all you want from your computer. It doesn't change the fact that they can trace it to you. If they get a subpoena, they can get anything. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people say things online under, you know, the the false sense of security of, you know, a pseudonym. But you can absolutely they can absolutely subpoena your actual name. One hundred percent. One second. Again, I'd like to see federal law on this. Other female streamers spoke out as well. Pokimane, um, who was in- You hear what's going on? We're talking about the um, the really nasty uh, deep fake porn, you know, market essentially, production of it. Hey, Shark, everyone follows Shark too. Did you see that quartering tried to use this as a dunk of female streamers, but was caught watching non-con porn? <gasps> no. Can you send that to me on Twitter? I did not see that. That also doesn't surprise me though. The quartering is, I don't, I don't even have the words <laughs> to describe my thought. I mean, I have the words, but none of them are TOS friendly. <laughs> no shot. No, that's not what I was saying. What is not non-consensual porn? Basically destroy your computer like Wahlberg did instead. <laughs> One of those deep fake videos says, stop sexualizing people without their consent. That's it. That's the tweet. Uh, sweet Anita says, this story was how I found out that I'm on this website. I literally choose or chose, yeah, choose to pass up millions uh, by going into sex, by, not, by going not going into sex work. Uh, and some random Cheeto encrusted porn addict solicits my body without my consent. Instead, don't know whether to cry, break stuff or laugh at this point. See, look, I hadn't even thought of that. Point. Sent you the screenshot. Thank you. Thinking it's so here it is. The quartering said Pokemon AI generated spicy video. Spicy video. Ugh. You should be blanked down like a dog. Pokemon AI generated spicy video ruins Twitch streamers, Twitch streamer, Atrioc career. I'm sorry. Did he have a stroke while writing this title? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Ruins Twitch streamers, Twitch streamer, Atrioc career. <laughs> And then here's him laughing about it. But here, what's the fourth screenshot? I didn't look at, there it is. Restream.io, Reddit, Orst Cream Pie. And you know what this symbol means? It means he's looked it up before. It means he's looked it up before. And then here was the deep fake pokey simp busted. 
You are so nasty. Despicable, grotesque man. Also, Brie Larson should get a restraining order against Jeremy. And I, this is just a good opportunity to remind everybody that uh, Jeremy shit his pants inside of a Walmart and left a fucking snail trail all over the floor of Walmart and then took his shitty pants off on the floor of the bathroom and then washed the shit off of his legs and arms in the sink. And then put those pants... I'm, like, gagging thinking about it. Put those pants back on. And his wife wouldn't let him get in the car. <laughs> the fact that he has a wife at all. Shocking. <laughs> Why does anyone know this? Because he told the world this. He went on a podcast. He went on a podcast. And divulge this information to the world. Do you know what those uh what are those fucking tears? Did he warp a frappuccino pick to get those weird syrup covered ice? I I don't know. Is he married to Caitlin Bennett? I'm sorry, but I'm not making a video with my wife sitting next to ha having a to apologize for my internet search history. He paid money to watch deep fake porn of people he knew personally. That's what he was apologizing for. And I don't think his apology is worth, you know, a dime. And that's a, a really interesting one. If they chose to go in the sex work, they would make maybe tens of millions of dollars. And they're saying, no, my, in, you know, whatever, however they perceive their bodily integrity is more important to them, more valuable to them. And then people violate that anyway. And so... This is a terrible story. And then the, the thing I'm obsessed about, rightly or wrongly, is his bad excuses. I, I got morbidly curious. Mm, no, dude. No one believes that. Right? Like, if it's something where you say, oh, like, it's like some really outlandish thing. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay, you checked it out or something. Yeah, people could believe that. But these are people you know, and you pay for it. When you pay for it, that's not morbid curiosity. That's, I wanted to purchase this. So yeah, like you don't slip and accidentally type in all of your credit card digits and then the three numbers on the back, okay? You didn't just sneeze and accidentally fucking enter the, the, the month and year that your credit card expires to purchase this porn, all right? This is not an accident. So the excuses are making it way worse. And it was already bad enough. Totally agree. The one final thing I'll say about it is... Look, I just know from experience, right? So if you're a woman, and especially if you're a woman with strong opinions in, in public spaces, you do get punished for it. You just do. And you get punished for it through these disgusting acts that, that are just meant to minimize. I just want to say right now, if you're wondering, like, if there are people defending it, there are people right now trying to follow my channel with names defending deep fake porn. And you probably can't see that on the back end of things, on the mod side of things. But that's happening right now. So yes, people are absolutely defending this and they think it's okay. Minimize who you are as a person and, and the message that you're trying to spread through the work you do uh, by just sexualizing you and degrading you uh, in, in this way. Uh, so I feel awful that women have to go through this and I have a lot of respect for women who just go for what they want to do in life, knowing full well the kind of punishment they're going to have to deal with as a result of following whatever their dream is. And, and I, I want to say, she's, she's fucking exactly right. And it's, there is unique types of harassment that women who are public figures face that men don't. Like, I, I have used this as an example in the past, but I've just been talking to JR, who has a lot more followers than me and has a much bigger platform than me, about some of the nasty comments I get from people who, you know, don't like TYT or whatever. And even he was shocked to find out the, the type of hate. We'll cover a story together and I will get the brunt of the hate because I'm a woman. And of course, he experiences like 
horrifying racial harassment that I don't get. But like, even he was surprised that the level of hatred people just have for me for being a woman in, in this field. And of course, when it comes to Anna, who's much a much larger public figure and has been in this game a lot longer than I have. I mean, just look at the comments under any of her fucking video er, tweets. They are rancid. Dehumanizing. Overly sexual. That Jimmy Dore. Yeah, she was being sexually harassed by her coworker, Fucking Jimmy Dore, who then joked about it and continues to joke about it and continues to sexually harass her. In this case, it's great. And all of his fans, of course, also sexually harass her. Content on Twitch or whatever it is, you know, so it, it takes a lot of courage to do it, to be honest. Thanks for watching The Young Curse. So like a lot of women just don't even want to enter this field, not political commentary necessarily, but, you know, being a public figure because they know. They know that they're going to have to endure a disgusting, sexualizing, dehumanizing, degrading harassment that men don't. It is a unique type of harassment. Like, I'm not saying that all public or, you know, public figures don't get harassed. They absolutely do. But it's not in the same overtly sexual way that women are. Like, I have people come in here and call me a titty streamer. Bitch, what? I wear, I wore turtleneck yesterday and today. I never sexualize myself. Ever. <laughs> I dress exceptionally conservatively. Not just on stream, but in my personal life. I am not someone who enjoys, you know, and just personally, and no, no, no shame against anybody else who likes doing it, but I just don't like to, you know, I don't even like the, uh, you know, idea that someone might sexualize me. And I'll wear baggy clothes, very high necked shirts. Most of the time I wear long sleeves and it still happens. It still happens. It don't, they don't care. Can confirm when I saw her in real life, she was dressed in a robe covered in a blanket. <laughs> I was wearing a hoodie and I kept the blanket wrapped around me the entire time because my legs were showing on the stream and I didn't want anybody to see my legs. <laughs> Speaking of loving your sweater, thank you. I don't like TYT, but it's still super gross to be so misogynistic and threaten sexual violence to folks. Even if I hate a woman in politics, I'd never, ever wish that kind of harm on people. It's the worst thing that can happen to you. Straight to hell with those people. Ray needs the Akatsuki attire. I would rock that fucking drip. 100%. Just how you want, forget the hate. I am dressing how I want. 100% <laughs> dressing how I want. But also just because someone shows a little skin is not, is not, you know, consent for you to sexualize them and be disgusting perverts to them. There are plenty of people who want to be sexualized. There are plenty of sex workers who are making content of their themselves sexualized for people to sexualize when they consume it. Go support them. Why is it? I don't have to ask why. I know why. But... I just find it disturbing, this desire to sexualize people who you know don't want to be sexualized. Because that's what it is, right? That's what they get off on, is knowing that it's non-consensual. Turtlenecks are cute. They are cute. Dora also sent threatening text to Francesca a long time ago. I only learned of this through Sahil of the Progressive Voice of all places. Yeah, I've seen those messages. They were really... He was on vacation sending her threatening messages. Also tweeting from Libtard01 on his vacation. Even when people want to be sexualized, it should be on their own terms. Exactly. Not being sexualized is a perk of age for, for me. One of the few. I think that men have a huge misconception of like, I see so often, and not all men, ugh, you know, not every man thinks this way, but I've seen a lot of men who think it's flattering for women that we enjoy being hit on in public. It is not fucking flattering. I don't go out in the world to be sexualized by strangers on the street or acquaintances it is not it doesn't make you feel good you don't walk away from having someone cat call you thinking oh i look great today you walk away from it feeling gross like ugh someone i didn't want to be commenting on my body fucking commenting on my body and it doesn't matter what you wear i'll say that it doesn't matter what you wear my, my uh podcast co-host and i were talking about this the other day 
Like we've both been catcalled while wearing parkas and masks in the winter in Chicago. You couldn't see, you could only see our eyes. That was the only part of our bodies that you could see. We had our hair under our hoods. You didn't even know if we were women. And they still do it. And they still do it. It doesn't even matter. So it's this, this idea that they can women can just avoid being sexualized if they just cover up his bullshit. And I'm going to read Ree's message because I know it doesn't matter what you wear in high school. Well, I had recently started wearing hijab, never had a BF or ever made physical contact with boys. Some girls tried spreading uh, slut room or some rumors that I was a slut. Fucking hell. I've been catcalled in my modest, loose clothing and hijab. Men are disgusting. Probably a mask fetishist. I don't think that was it. I listen to that episode. My wife gets that too, but she's very thick, so it adds to it. Well, that that's when Matt Bender exposed Dora's second Twitter account. And Dora was tweeting a little and fake it. Yeah, I wonder if a fake beard would do it. I I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I've been catcalled since I was fourteen. Men do not care. Yeah, I remember like leaving middle school in my middle. So my the middle schools in my area had uniforms. It was a public school, but we had uniforms because gangs. And they didn't want us repping gang colors. But um, I would get catcalled while walking home from the middle school in my middle school uniform. They knew I was in middle school, and that did not deter them. That did not deter them at all. In fact, it added to it because they would call me jailbait. They would like say gross things about me and then afterwards call me jailbait. So like, you know, I'm a child. You know that I cannot be older than 14 years old. And that did not deter you. I was called a Satan worshiping militant lesbian at my job in mid 2000s. That's pretty cool. I know it's meant to be an insult, but like, that's pretty cool. Should be swiftly fucking redacted. I thought jailbait was supposed to be like a young looking 19. No, it's when you are underage, but you look older in their opinion. So like you might send them to jail is the idea behind it. That schoolgirl fetish. I wonder which is more popular among men, schoolgirl or nurses. It's funny though, because I lost. It's funny though, because our uniforms were like khaki pants and <laughs> like there's like it's not even like a fetishist's idea of like a schoolgirl uniform. It was khaki pants and a blue polo. <laughs> Solid colored shoes. Thanks, kissy face though. It was it was dusty for sure. It was dusty for sure. I hated that, those uniforms. At least nurses have to be at least in their 20s. Right. Right. What? Pants? They can't call the 12-year-old in pants. <laughs> yes. What are you wearing, Jake, from State Farm? Yeah, khaki straight out of State Farm commercial. Literally, I was literally walking off a State Farm commercial set, and they were still cat calling me. Yeah, those skirts were not good looking. <laughs> no. I had some uh, you know, friends who went to the Catholic high school in my area. They hated their uniforms. Because the whole idea behind uniforms is to provide less distraction and or sex. Well, in my case, in my school, the whole point behind the uniform was to stop people from repping gang colors. I didn't grow up in the best place. <laughs> but, you know, the dress code was... I one time... Because you had to wear... You had to wear a camisole under your shirt. And one time the strap of my, you know, cami was showing and I got dress coded for it because I might be a distraction. Like if a strap from an undershirt distracts you from your learning, you weren't going to do any learning in the first place. You don't have the capacity to learn anything. We had gang fights all the time. So largely threw kids in the rooms and locked the doors and hope they were all the same size. Hey, don't. What are you trying to say? What is that? What is that? No, what does that mean? What are you even saying here? You don't even speak English. She's like sniffing Jenk's face. She was. Please don't do anything evil. Don't don't do any evil. She is saying happy birthday to you. She was saying happy birthday to you last night too. Right when we called, she got all up on the microphone. Hi. You sniffing. There's nothing in the air. 
I would think your confidence of zero fucks to give would have given you more problems in school. I was a really good kid. I was in like gifted programs or whatever and like never got in trouble. I was a square until high school and then I was kind of a shithead, but I never got in trouble either. I was like, I've always been good at school. I've never necessarily been good at paying attention or giving a crap, but I've definitely been really it, things. School has come easy to me. I can do very little work and get good grades. I literally, <laughs> I, I haven't gone to one of my classes all semester so far. I'm being, I'm, I'm, I have deep, severe senioritis for my last year of law school. Like, Last semester, I was mentally tuned out every single day. I didn't read a single page of a single book for class <laughs> the entire semester. I could not be bothered. And I got almost straight A's. I got two B pluses and the rest of my grades were A's. And at this point in my life, I'm like, I can't unlearn this. I can't unlearn this. I've only got one semester of education left for the rest of my life. <laughs> I have, you know, people keep asking me how hard law school is. And I got to be honest, it's been pretty easy sailing after the first semester. I've never gotten bad grades, though. I feel uh, pretty fortunate that I've just sort of had this, you know, easy, can skate by and do well. Gives me time to do other stuff. Sometimes I read, I promise that. If it's a class I actually give a shit about and I think I'll use in practice. But I mean, I work in the field right now, like, like today I was talking to opposing counsel and she said, and I don't work in real estate law, but we we're talking about a real estate dispute. And she told me that I was able to come up with more information from my record searches than the private real estate firm that she hired to investigate it. Because I have just gotten so interested in this case that I spent a lot of time going through these fucking deed rec record searches, deed searches. It just had me dying. Like, that's not my practice area. That's your practice area. You do property law. I do <laughs> discrimination law. She is the lawyer now. Seventh grade me that failed and had to go to summer school never thought he would get a master's degree. Well, hey, congratulations. Suck it, seventh grade you. <laughs> you were wrong. I'm in school right now to become an art therapist and I get good grades, but not without work. I'm not going to say I don't work. I definitely work when, when the time comes down to it. But law school, all your entire grade, it's just dependent on the final exam. So I can really wait. I bet you are punching air at the cases the Supreme Court are taking if you are a discrimination lawyer. Uh, honestly, most of my focus is on the horrible decisions coming out of the uh, Chicago human rights commission but of course every once in a while we come together as a team to lament our horrifying supreme court like most of my job is just trying to get landlords to not discriminate against disabled people just like begging them hey this person is disabled and what you're doing is illegal can you please stop Otherwise, I'm going to have to file a lawsuit against you. And they're like, uh, I don't really think that dis disabled rights are a thing. I'm going to keep discriminating against them. Slumlords, yeah. Ugh. Honestly, I could go on and on about these record searches I've been doing, but I would needlessly bore you. I was like that in high school, but I became disabled. And since then, I haven't been able to get back into school. And school's really ableist, so I get that. Social workers they, that outed me. I don't know. Parasites, maybe. Definitely parasites. Okay, anyway, so that's that. Let me bring it back. I've just... I've needlessly had Jenk's face on the screen this entire time. Um... Just thought of something. Why do, You don't use your real name or say where you live. You won't let your parents on because they might use your real name. Does that mean no one at school knows you're Ravana because someone would have outed you by now? Oh, they definitely know. Some of them definitely know. My friends know. And then, like, because law school is just like middle school, but for grown people who have alcohol problems, yeah, they talk. They definitely are gossipy and they talk shit. Um, 
No, people definitely know in my law school. I just don't think that they have like the capacity to understand like what they could possibly gain from out. And they, like I highly doubt they even know that I don't use my name on stream. It's not like they're watching. No one has come in chat to expose you. Some of my friends have said my name in chat and I've had to scold them afterwards without drawing attention to it in the first place. Um, They know, they know. No, they definitely know. I had some guy come up to me at like a mixer. Mom Vanna is so sweet. I had some guy come up to me at like a law school mixer and he was in one of my classes. I think he was in my con law class, constitutional law for anyone who doesn't know. And he was like, Hey, you're in con law with me, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, I saw you on Twitter and I almost threw myself down the stairs in that moment. And I was like, uh, what? He was like, I saw one of your tweets about abortion. And while I disagree with you, I think it's cool what you're doing. And I was like, wait, hold on. What do you mean you disagree with me on abortion? Maybe I should be throwing you down the stairs. I rep a lot of tenants and LLs get morally outraged if they have to do anything to their properties for tenants every time. That is literally the the brunt of my case right now. It's just that the, the condo association is like, actually, if your client has literally no ability to access our parking garage because we haven't respected the plat that we issued with the condo uh, declaration that says that this space needs to be reserved as an accessible route so that disabled people can access their cars, um, we don't really see how that's our problem. We love landlords here, don't we, folks? What is that? I hate that picture so much. The left would never say, I disagree, but I think you're cool. Motherfucker, the disagreement is kind of the entire ball game. Yeah, I was like, I don't, you know, I, I was, I just laughed and I said, okay, <laughs> and walked away. <laughs> it was like, I, I'm sure, I, although I will say, I recognize that guy from class because I saw him watching porn on his laptop in front of me. Not like watching, watching, but he had it open. I was like, yeah, I recognize you too from class. I know you're in my class. He sat next to his girlfriend, which I thought was the most egregious part of it. I was so creepy. He like opened his laptop and just porn was on the screen. I was like, bro, don't you have a phone? Like, why are you watching full screen porn on your fucking laptop? Like, can we not? Can we not do that? Okay, I did want to watch this video where um, Cutie talks about how horrible this has been for her as well, because I think it's important. Man can't close a tab. <laughs> what is it about men in porn? That, yeah. <laughs> Also, like you're in your lost, like this, you know, high school, college, undergrad. You're in law school. <laughs> you're going to be a licensed attorney someday. And that horrifies me. I will say trigger warning, you know, it's very emotional. And, um, you know, she talks about how violating it is. How have people not figured out by now not to leave porn on their your computer? I can spank you with the best of them, but. Best believe the tab is closed when I'm done. I was in an ER once and the doctor was watching porn and he went to a patient's room with a boner, a kid patient. He got fired. What the fuck? Gotta go. Can't firing them is not enough. Send them straight to hell. I want to go live because this is what pain looks like. This is what it looks like. Okay. Fuck the fucking internet. Fuck the constant exploitation and objectification of women is exhausting fuck atrioc for showing it to thousands of people fuck the people dming me pictures of myself from that from that website that is so fucked up that is so fucked up like you are you should not be allowed to participate in society if you think that that shit's funny or like you enjoy that level of cruelty against another human. Fuck you all. Another human who has never done anything to you and does not know you exist. If you are able to look at women who are not selling themselves or benefiting off of being seen sexually, they're not benefiting, they're not selling it, they're not platforming it themselves. If you are able to look at that, you are the problem. You see women as an object.
you should not be okay doing that. And it should not be a part of my job to have to pay money to get this. And she's typically very family friendly, right? Definitely broke her to see that shit. Yeah. Stop taking it down. It should not be part of my job to be harassed, to see pictures of me nude spread around. It should not be something that is found on the internet. It shouldn't be. That's, this shouldn't be a part of my job. And the fact that it is, is exhausting. I had a similar disabled parking issue with the previous landlord. They had a disabled parking spot, but I couldn't roll my wheelchair from my from my spot to my apartment. There wasn't clear access or photos to the city, but they didn't do anything. Yeah, I feel like so many times the city's never going to do anything. You got to get a lawyer to do it, honestly. But I'll just say, like, she is very brave for doing this because No, uh, Chris, what they do is they take, they feed an AI, uh, uh, you know, an AI. And because she's a streamer, there is so much footage of her. Hours and hours of footage of her facial features. And then it creates what it believes to be realistic sexual, you know, expressions. And then they take her face making those expressions and put it on the body of a, an actual vid, like an actual video of porn. That's how they do it. So it's her face on the bodies of people who are having sex. It's so disgusting. And the person that made that website, I'm going to fucking sue you. I promise you. With every part of my soul, I'm going to fucking sue you. That's all I have to say. I mean, it's just like. <sighs> Maybe that's not appropriate with what I'm about to say. I know it's not the same, but I've had people send me like. People on like forums talking about how they want to have sex with me with pictures of me just normal they'll post a normal picture of me fully clothed because no other types of pictures of me exist and they'll just be talking in depth in great detail about how they want to have sex with me i was posted before it was finally shut down thank fucking god and i can't believe it took so long I was posted on, for anyone who knows what this is, Red Scare for Cis Het Men, which is was just a um, subreddit where they would post pictures of female politicians and political commentators and talk about them sexually and sexualize them and objectify them. And there were some really nasty things said about me on there. I get DMs from people describing how they want to rape me. And, like, it is so dehumanizing and it's also demoralizing like it makes you not want to do your job it makes you not enjoy you know streaming or doing commentary as much as it, you have in the past i'll pull this tweet up because someone asked if we were talking about andrew tate so i can for one moment with this tweet it shouldn't be that far down there it is. So I covered Andrew Tate's very credible rape allegations on TYT. And I'm just going to read you one reply. Just one that I got. I wonder how much this TYT turd scoundrel will fetch in the sex trade market. Also, this next line just makes me laugh. Nice narration, by the way, woman. But like this person is literally, because I'm covering Andrew Tate, fantasizing about how much money they would make by sex trafficking me. Like this is the type of harassment that we have to endure. You know who else was on, on this with me? Um, Mark Thompson. You know who wasn't getting this kind of disgusting comments about them? Mark Thompson. Despite the fact that he was also covering the story with me, 
there were so many misogynistic reply comments about me. And I usually don't look at the comments, but I wanted to for that video because I wanted to prove that there is no evidence because this story was where Andrew Tate was on voice recording, sending voice memos saying, I loved raping you. And I was like, it will never be enough evidence for them. So I was just like pulling tweets that were super sexist about me and, and shit like that to prove that it was never gonna be enough. There was just also just one more. It should be this. Yeah. This, but Ravana should go to a nudist colony. She would be one with mother nature. If she took all of her clothes off. Would love to see Ravana in her birthday suit. Ravana should be a nudist. This is not even that egregious compared to some of the other shit that I see said about me and the replies or the comments, to these videos. I mean, this is disgusting in its own right, but this is not even does not scratch the surface of the nasty things people say about me. Like, and I'm not a big streamer. Did a TYT offer to support you knowing you could be at the top? I, I pitched that story. I pitched and produced that story. I wanted to cover it. You're great at your job, Ray. We heart you and we've got your back. Thank you. There's also other things that I think that there's some well-intentioned people who just don't realize what they're doing is inappropriate because TYT's audience is primarily Gen X and it's primarily male, as is common with most YouTube channels. So some people will say things like, oh, I really love Ray's commentary. She's, you know, smart and sexy, which I'm not trying to be sexy. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to see you saying that. It's really not a compliment to me. Like the fact that you can't just, you would never say that about a guy. You would never say that about a male commentator. They, they don't say that about fucking Jackson White. They're, some of the women definitely sexualize Jackson White. But the, they're not in the replies, like in the comments, like, Oh, I love Jackson White's commentary. He's so insightful and also hot as shit. Like that's not, you have to recognize that what you're saying about me, you would not say about a man. And that is what makes it sexist. Gen X, yeah, oh, well, if I had to, I'd fight for Ray, thank you. You're amazing. There are a lot of us that love you. Thank you, I appreciate that. I do get a lot of love and I love the love. But like there's people who try to compliment me and they do it in a creepy way. Like. Like, you don't need to describe to me how much you want to date me to compliment my coverage of stories. That should not be included in that. That should, that has, if you want to think that personally, I can't stop you. But I don't want you to say it to me. You know that's not a possibility. You know I'm never going to date you guy in the YouTube comments. Guy who just followed me on Instagram and then liked every single one of my pictures for the past two years. And I got and sent me like 35 notifications all at the same time. You know you're never going to date me. You must know that. So please, don't send me your dating application to my DMs. It's not happening. People have sent me, you know, essays, paragraphs upon paragraphs of the reasons why I should date them. And it's so weird. Because you're not doing that for male content creators. So it feels so misogynistic you're my absolute favorite streamer i tell you every month smile you do chris Huggy, and i appreciate that a lot and how creepy my fellow men are or ben glebe he's cute because because he's so funny why you reject me future wife yeah like not everyone wants physical compliments if you wouldn't say it in person you probably shouldn't say it online not that hard some of these people definitely would say it in person so you were dating application and i thought it was pretty good but you have not dated me yet i'm still getting through the application it's been this you know it's a pretty rigorous process Jimmy Dore is a primary example of the Gen X person who just completely lost his mind. Definitely. I mean, he's got some other issues compounding that. Sometimes I want to give you guys compliments, but there just aren't great ways to give out non-creepy compliments. I would never think a compliment from you is creepy, Re. I promise that. Here is a term paper with the argument and data why you should date me. That's literally what they do, though. I'm not going to read them because I'm not trying to put these people on blast by name but they're grotesque in so long. And the other thing that I think is really weird that I know that some other women streamers I've talked about also experience is like, men will just message us as if we are their therapists. People I've never met, people I've never heard of will send me like the most like depressed shit 
like the most traumatizing shit they're going through in their lives and then just ask me to be there for them like no i'm not gonna be, i don't know you how can i be there for you why would you think i wanted to read this like i'm so, <laughs> i'm sorry you're going through it that sucks why are you telling me i don't know you that's so that's so overstepping a boundary i shouldn't even have to say that you shouldn't do that you should know not to do that you can't reach out to me for help i'm not a healthcare professional i'm not a licensed therapist and i sure as hell am not your licensed therapist i don't know you or people will talk to me in, like in depth about their dating struggles and it's like i'm I don't fucking know you. Why do you feel so comfortable divulging all this information to me? Not someone to dump your shit on. Also inappropriate to complete stranger. Yeah, like you don't go up to someone on the sidewalk and be like, oh, I'm really depressed. I might, you know, my life's really taken a taken a toll on me lately. You know, I haven't left the house in six months. Like, you wouldn't do that. So don't do it to me. I think people get like this weird idea that they they have some sort of personal relationship with me just because they watch especially people who just watch my rebel hq content or watch me on tyt like when it comes to i like i have friends who are people in the chat that like i have rapport with people in my community i, mean, I met tina streaming and she's one of my best friends like it's not something that can't happen but just watching my stream you don't we don't have a relationship like it's yeah, aside from a parasocial one, like I don't mind when people message me things like they'll just say, hey, I really like this or like, hey, I saw this cute cat and it made me think of you. So I sent it to you or here's a, you know, here's a video of a capybara or things like that. Or just like, hey, I watched this video and I wanted to know if I could ask you a question about it, like things like that. It's fine. I won't reply to all of them. I'll be honest with you. I get a lot of DM requests, especially on Instagram, but like which is weird because I have less followers on Instagram, but I get a lot more DM requests on Instagram. Um, but like, I don't have a problem with that. Fargo is someone also who I met through Twitch, who's my friend who I've hung out with in real life. Like it happens, but like, you just have to be aware that like, I'm going to have different relationships with people who've been in my community for like an extended period of time. And like, it's people sort of come in and they immediately assume that we have that same relationship. And it's just like, dog, I don't know you. I do not exist IRL. <laughs> we are never gonna hang out IRL. We'll hang out in AI. I'll see you in the fucking metaverse. I'll definitely see you first. My boyfriend application turned into a trauma dump halfway through. Hopefully I still get a boyfriend interview. Trace Leches cake. I love Trace Leches. But anyway, that was my little rant for a minute. Just because these things feel so misogynistic, they're really exhausting. That having people like unload their problems on you is exhausting because like I'm going through shit in my life sometimes. Not right now. Things are pretty medium, I suppose. Things are good. I'm, you know, I'm okay. <laughs> but like sometimes, I mean, my dad's been in the hospital. So like when someone sends me like a really long message about all the shit that they've been going through and like I'm going back and forth to the hospital to visit my dad, it's like you're going to feel bad if I don't reply. I'm going to feel like shit for not replying, but I'm doing dealing with my own stuff. Like I'm not going to prioritize you who I don't know over what I have going on in my actual life. Also, lastly, stop asking me for legal advice. If you want to message me and say, Hey, I'm having a problem. Can you help me find a resource? I might be able to help with that. But sometimes people are like, do I have a case? And I'm like, first of all, I can't tell you that legally. I cannot tell you that. But also, I'm not your lawyer. There's a lot of resources. You can, the time that it took for you to type this out into the, my fucking DMs, you could have done a Google search and connected with some of the resources. Sometimes, though, people have niche issues and they, they want to know, like, what's the ty right type of attorney? What's the right type of, you know, public interest resources to go, you know, pursue? I'm happy to help that in, in that way uh, most of the time. I didn't know he's back in the hospital. I'm so sorry to hear that. It's all right. He's getting better slowly, but surely. Ray, can you please tell Tina I'm harmless? She's, she's definitely harmless. I, I don't see what was going on. 
I hope your dad is okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chris Huggy. He's he's getting stronger. He's getting better. So just one day at a time. He was watching yesterday with my mom in the hospital. Which was super cute. My mom came into the chat because I was talking about sister wives and my mom had mad shit to say about my, my not about my dad. <laughs> mad shit to say about sister wives, specifically Robin and Cody, who she hates. But I really need to ask you if I could sue the Chinese buffet for not being truly, quote, all you can eat. Do they cut you off? <laughs> Your mom is great. My mom is great. I love her. Your dad is okay. Thank you. Anyway, there's something else I wanted to talk about. Give me one moment to refresh my memory. Here, I'll play music for you while I remember. Oh, that felt good, actually. I needed to stretch. Oh, I wanted to talk about this because it's in the same vein as everything. Whoa, look at me remembering. Pokimane. I know that her name is supposed to be Red Pokemon, but it's just... I can't say it. I can't say it. Can we get some more happy B days in the chat for Tina? She's 12 years old today. She just got her first, uh, <laughs> she just got her uh, parental controls disabled from her computer. So she, that's why she's in the chat. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> anyway, so Poke Pokimane revealed, I'll just call her Pokey. Pokey revealed that she has a team who blocks accounts for her to avoid seeing hate on social media. And of course, naturally, the replies to this video would not surprise you even in the slightest. I, biggest secrets that I'm going to reveal right now, okay? I don't think I've revealed this before. <laughs> So you say, like, your mute list is expanding. And here's the thing. My block list expands, too. But here's the other thing. I'm not even the one blocking people. Like, if people say some weird shit in my replies, on God, 90% of the time, I don't see it. I really, I have people on my account blocking people for me. <laughs> and so when people are like, <laughs> when like, oh my God, Pokemon blocked me. I'm like, it wasn't even me. <laughs> I she's such a queen for that. She's such a queen for that. Like people are really angry. They're like, "Oh, this means that she can't handle being on the internet." Like, I think that she knows more about being the victim of harassment on the internet than you do with your fucking 12 followers, bitch. She's the biggest like female content creator in this sphere. Can confirm Pokey has an online safety team with multiple programmers. Like, and she deserves it. The type of nasty gendered uh, harassment that she receives, she should never have to see that. And that I, people sometimes post like, oh, Ravana, block me. If I think you're mildly annoying, I'll block you. Like on Twitter, I don't want my, my t timeline to be filled with people I don't like or people whose opinions I don't value. I don't want to see that. I shouldn't have to see that. It makes that it makes it un like less enjoyable for me. I don't know if anyone can handle being on the internet. There, but it's just so like. Let me just pull up one that I saw. Do 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 phenomena. Do 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 phenomena. Do 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 phenomena this there was one really funny one of a guy who was like i make more money than pokey it's this guy i know it's this guy no it's not him it's a different guy i didn't know it was him 
this guy. It's this guy. Just this interaction is so funny. Someone like her will never make it in real life, which is crazy. Like this, this woman is one of the most, one of the most successful streamers of all time. Someone like her will never make it in real life. Avoiding confrontation makes one weak, not strong. All right, just confront thousands of people a day who hate you. Seems pretty easy. But that was, it was this one. She made it, dude. She doesn't need your approval. Donating money to Amnesty International is making it, which is like, what do you even mean by that? Like, what does that even mean? Do you think that's her job is donating money to Amnesty International? She makes more money in a month than you will make in your pathetic life. No, sir. You're not even close. And this guy bought his blue check. He only has 1,300 followers. <laughs> Semper Fi to the people. He was in the fucking military, bro. You're not making more money than Pokey made. I make more money than she does, but the point is she raises for money for groups like Amnesty International who spread propaganda. Is he like a Zionist or something? You're part of the problem if you don't see the need to push back on people blindly supporting organizations like that. Oh, well, you absolutely do not make more money than she does. You literally have to pay for a Twitter checkmark. I do make more money than her. Not to mention, I have inventions and apps and software I've made. Her stream goes down and no one giving her any more money, which is not how that works, just by the way. Not to mention, she'll be irrelevant in max five years. If she keeps doing charity streams for propaganda organizations, Pokemon is going to be irrelevant if she raises money for Amnesty, one of the biggest fucking, <laughs> one of the biggest NGOs in the, in the world. Like, you have to realize that you are a niche weirdo for strongly hating Amnesty. And I was in Amnesty in college. Um, mostly for the parties, but it was a good organization. I liked it. I think they're a little tepid in some of their criticisms, but, like, my my criticisms of them are not are not this drastic. Even when she was done, uh, even when she stopped streaming, she won't need any more money. Literally, like, this woman is, you know, incredibly rich. <laughs> but this guy's like, I make more money than her. I've got apps and inventions. Bro, what are you inventing? <laughs> He's so angry that he knows that, t that, uh, that Pokey will never see his hate, though. I bet he has NFTs. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't think he might, he'll have bought NFTs for sure. Read my jokes. He's manifesting, leave him alone. <laughs> he probably wrote the program for Tesla's self-driving feature. He's inventing new ways to be sexist. Yeah, exactly. Let him cook. Let him cook. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Rage types about how much money I make. I actually make more money than Pokey made. I have inventions. He invented his own false biography. <laughs> YouTube does this thing where if you're banned, you can still type in chat, but nobody will actually see it. It's almost like a ghost chat. Valkyrie said this herself on stream. That's interesting. And you don't know that your messages aren't being sent. That's actually smart because then you can't like, you won't necessarily think that you should just make a new account and try again because you don't necessarily know. Um. Yep, I think it's a better way of banning toxic people in my opinion. Yeah, because I actually, should I check right now my, uh, unban request i think i have one in the chamber or maybe i unbanned them yesterday i do have an unban request free nude deep fakes of jeremy quartering click here and then it's a tiny url link super hot limited time only i would pay you to not see that I would pay you to not see that. <laughs> Which one of you did that? Which one of you was that? I, it's what you got to send it again then, Cave Dweller, like, because I didn't click the link.
most Twitch streamers would have chat on screen. They're talking about YouTube. I don't know how common it is for YouTubers to have the chat on the, sh the stream, on the screen. I don't see it as often as Twitch. Because I feel like even YouTube live streams are somewhat less interactive. You do get more viewers on YouTube. It was a short little hairy guy. I'm glad I didn't click on it. I made it my profile picture. I couldn't see the profile picture. I had a suspicion it was you. Um. Now that anyone, not that anyone should ever do this, but I wonder how these men would feel if they were deep faked into gay porn. They might actually understand how invasive it is then. They wouldn't understand. They would be angry, but they that wouldn't change their opinions, I'm sure. Here's the thing I really hate. So I avoid saying this. I really hate when people say, um, oh, on that account you did. I really hate when people say, how would you feel? How would you feel if it was your sister or your mom? Because it sh you shouldn't have to, it shouldn't take that, right? You shouldn't have to like personally relate to it or like understand how it would be if it was a relative of yours or someone you care about. You should just get it. You should fucking get it. Why does it have to be personal for you to fucking... And they don't... After that said, they, they almost never back down anyway. They'll just say something like, my mom would never do it. That would never happen to my sister or my mom. Or they'll just double, double down and be like, I wouldn't care. That's got nothing to do with me. I wouldn't look at it. But it's like... I mean, and I guess some people start to like understand it better, but why do we have to relate it to you? Why for you to understand? Why does it have to be explained to you in terms of like your relatives for you to fucking even attempt to grasp the pervasive and severe nature of the problem? Blue's Road, thank you so much for the 700 biddies. You ever see those late night commercials get yours due to supply chains and rising costs with shutting down production, yada, yada? like liquidation sale kind of commercials is a good way to point out their lack of understanding in my opinion. I think it's just frustrating that like you can't fathom how this would harm someone until it impacts you personally. I've seen some really sociopathic takes from certain large male streamers getting lots of upvotes and support maddening. Not leftist ones to be clear. I saw this on Reddit. Reddit is hell. When I say that people should go to hell, I really mean people should go to Reddit. Okay. My tummy hurts a little bit. <laughs> I'm hungry, I think. I haven't eaten today. So I'm gonna raid VO. It's been real so fun, it's been real fun. I'll probably stream early tomorrow, or not early, but like earlier. And then, uh, and then I'll stream Friday. I'm just telling you, I'm just thinking through my days with you all right now. But anyway, 